Sorry. Well, I have uh, the pleasure to say good morning, everybody, because it's really good morning. Good, you know why? Because we prepared the special event for you this morning. Uh, and to prepare it, it, was, it wasn't very easy, because our, my friend and our guest of today had to cover, uh, I don't know how many kilometers he had to cover to come here, but I know that it took him more than 24 hours, changing flights, changing continents, and so on. So it's, uh, it, he's a real hero, you know. Uh, please welcome him, Mr. Cow. Uh, the only th uh, one of the purposes, one of the aims of Mr. Cow of his visit here is to deliver a lecture, but not only that uh, was his uh, aim, to see Sochi, to see the infrastructure that remained from the, after the Olympic and Paralympic Games, probably to see his son, but I'm not sure of that. Uh, but in general, uh, he made this trip, and now I have the real pleasure to welcome here Mr. Cow, Chin Chung. He is the rect rector and the president. I'm only rector, so I'm a, a, a bit smaller. <laughs> and he is only the president of the National Taiwan Sport University. Uh, at the same time, he is the senior advisor of the Asian Association for Sport Management, of, of the whole Asia, the senior advisor of the Global Chinese Association for Sport Management, another one, and <clears throat> for me it's very important, he is the member of Indiana University Alumba Association. So he is the graduate, postgraduate of the Indiana University. Welcome, Mr. Kao. Thank you, Rector uh, Dr. Lev, uh, my friends. And I'm very glad and honored to have this opportunity at this uh, very advanced and distinguished uh, place uh, for the higher education in sport management uh, at Sochi. And uh, I spent uh, 20 hours uh, uh, from Taipei flying through Hong Kong to Moscow and to Sochi. Although I have been here uh, less than two days, but I feel that I have been here for one week because uh, everyone, uh, we feel like uh, we know each other 10 years ago, and we meet again. Uh, that's the place, this time it's uh, in Sochi. And uh, today's, uh, my presentation, uh, the theme is globalization of higher education in sport management. This is a sort of a try. Uh, uh, try to uh, touch this topic and the phenomena. One of uh, my power coming from uh, Rector Dr. Lev, uh, last May, uh, on May 30, he delivered a wonderful speech at Taiwan Sport University, and I listened to him. Then I know more about the sport management higher education in Russia. So uh, I spent about uh, 15 years since year 2000. I work with the colleagues in the sport management in Asia, in European, especially Laboro University and uh, uh, Germany Sport University Cologne, uh, Chris, Chris Toffer Brewer and also uh, working uh, with some from Northern America. And five months ago, I know more about Russia. So today, I am sort of a, uh, not only to share, but also to learn uh, from here about higher education in sport management. But if you go to the internet, check on the uh, Google. The definition of globalization, always you can see 
it says it is a process of interaction and integration among people, companies, and governments of different nations. That is a process driven by international trade, investment, and aided by information technology. But I think most of you think this definition missing something. Why we are here? We are not here for the international trade. We come in here for learning something, for learning advanced competence. We are here for education, same on sport management for the future. So you will agree with me. After one hour, my open lecture, this definition is an old, old definition. Forget it. We move forward. This is the Asian time. Always you see the Silk Road uh, from China to through the uh, Central Asia and uh, toward the uh, East uh, Europe. They, they always mention that uh, this is uh, the ancient globalization. But some of our alumni at NTSU, now uh, in the past five years, they organized a cycling team, cycling from Taiwan and uh, fly to China and then began to cycling about 4,000 kilometers for two months. They say they are walking the new Silk Road. This is the other uh, phenomena for globalization, but they are not for trading. So today, my outline of my presentation, I will focus on the birth of sport management in higher education around the world. And then I talk about the sport management education, like the Rio offers a master program in sport administration. And then uh, I say something about the trend of global, global higher education. And then I will reach uh, my observation and experience two approaches of sport management globalization. I name by trunk or by route, two approaches. That I got some ideas from uh, uh, Dr. Lev in Taiwan. And then I would like to leave uh, about 10 minutes for discussion. In Russia, America, Europe, Australia, or Asia, those universities, they offer the degree major in sport management or major in sport administration. You can see in Russia, I think that is a real, Russia International Olympic University. And uh, in America, Ohio University, the beginner, 1966, in the College of Business School. And in Europe, the German Sport University Cologne, or Labro University, or even Sheffield University, they began sport management uh, program. And in Australia, the University of Technology, Sydney, also begin to offer the uh, sport management majors. And in Asia, there are many countries around Asia and also diverse. In Japan, uh, you can uh, see the Waseda University or even Tsukuba University. They offer some program uh, for sport management in 1980s. And in Korea, the Korea National Sport University, they began to offer sport management program in 1990. And Taiwan, the National Taiwan Sport Un University began to offer sport management degree in 1997. And China, the Shanghai Sport University and the Beijing Sport University, they also offer the uh, sport management major degrees uh, around year 2000. 
And the Thailand, the Kasesa University, they began to offer uh, in year 2008, and in Malaysia, the University of Malaya, in year 2013, they also offer the uh, master degree of sport administration. But why the sport management program or diploma offered in a university system? For a university, the mission of a university is to cultivate the human capital for society sustainable development. And to realize these missions, the university always set a major goal, is to help or educate or even training the students, they will have the capacity to work effectively in industry or in the social organization or even in the international organization. And the strategy to educate or teaching is the university, the teacher, the faculties work with social international organizations or even the industry in teaching, in research, and the training. Then to realize the mission of the university. But why sport management in a university coming out in past 20 years? America could be the, the earliest one in 1960s. But why they coming out only in the late 10 years or 20 years? Why management? Sport exists in our society for thousands of years for play, for recreation, or even for competition. But why management coming out? Because we try to strengthen, create, or extend the power of sport by way of management or administration. Like a football, everybody knows football. There are power from football, exercise, or competition. But if we want to strengthen, create more power to extend, management is one of our choice to help it. So what and how management is applied upon sport? I use the symbol of Taiji, the management going coming to sport field. And also sport become the content of management. So always the marketing, promotion, economics, financial, or organization governance, the venues operation, leadership, project management, public relations, media and the communication, innovation, and the services operations in management field are always applied to sport. For example, when we deliver the sport event services, this is uh, Djokovic and uh, Amagro. They play a demonstration match at our university. So we want to de deliver the sport event service. We have to focus on the event planning, the theme of the event, the match of player or match of team, the rule of match. We have to plan and decide. Then we have to choose the proper venue and arrange transportation and make sure the venue is safety, there are enough capacity and operations on the venue. And then we began to promote the event. And then for financial purpose, we sell ticket, we design attractive activities, selling souvenir and have a press conference or media report to the public. And uh, we design the service as a venue with guidance, interpretation. We provide drink, food for the spectators. And then we have to control our budget, our cost, and our revenue to sustain this sport event. And maybe there are some company or some individual 
they would like to provide some financial resource for this event, then we call them their sponsor for this event. And the other type of sport service is an exercise service. People do not compete, but they do exercise for health or for friendship or for realize their dream. Like the picture, this is the highest mountain of Taiwan. Sea level 4,000 meters high. People's every day, about only 200 people allowed to reach the summit of the mountain. They have a capacity uh, control maxima per day. So, but it is very tough. So for those who want to deliver the exercise service for those people, uh, mountain climbing or cycling or sea marine sport, then you have to design the exercise. Then you have to choose the place. The place needs some equipment. The clothes should be changing or even you provide some shower uh, for them. And especially, you need to provide some instructors to lead these participants because these activities are potentially risk, risky. They need some guidance to help them. And then you have to promote these people. They need to regular exercise, not just doing the exercise once a month. It is dangerous. It could be harmful. To, to, to the physical or even psychological uh, disaster uh, during climbing the mountain or cycling for 100 kilometers a day. And uh, so you need to have some supportive services for this participant, like you have some uh, goods selling, some equipment, or even they have a baby, you have to provide some babysitting service so the adult can be uh, uh, relaxed to participate in the exercise. For those who are major in sport management, they want to strengthen, create values for the power of sport. Here, I summarize the sport management professional education uh, uh, system. That is, we design the course and by way of teaching, then we help students to have a competence mix of sport management. And then the student can be capable to show their competence uh, when he play the job on working. We, I call it occupational competence. And in the occupation, occupational competence, the person of sport manager. He needs to have strong motivation and a positive personal trait. I call self-concept. You have to have positive personal trait and uh, sufficient knowledge for reasoning and problem solving. And then you need to have practical operations skill on information technology, communications, and a self management, then you can be competent when playing the role of sport manager. Then I will talk about the courses, structure, and the teaching. Uh, this is, I talk with uh, some faculties uh, in Europe, in Asia, in America, and I summarize the courses structure of uh, sport management. Uh, always, there are three parts of courses in sport management. The first one is a general courses. This is a human-based. You are interested it is on the individual human and the society, his value system, his language, his culture. You have to know each other, especially when globalization. You have to know each person from each country. They have different uh, cultural background, language or different sign language. And then the second part is professional courses. That is knowledge base, very scientific base knowledge. 
this occupy most part of the courses. And then the sport manager student should have practical courses that is skill based. And the format of teaching and the training for the sport managing uh, student. Uh, sometimes we have a lecturing, like now we are lecturing and the students listening and then discussion. The second is presentation. Students, when they're reading or doing something for their own purpose, they have to make presentation in writing or in oral presentation to make sure he fully understand he got the competence or make others understand to have new ideas. And then uh, uh, they will arrange the field experience to have some tool looking uh, some sport uh, events or some uh, environment. Uh, like last night, uh, last e uh, afternoon, yesterday, I visit the Sochi Olympic Park and I learned a lot from the Sochi uh, Winter Olympic Games, after that, there are many transformations uh, from Winter Olympic Games venue. Going to the future, they will have a new uh, venues for football, for indoor uh, tennis, or even basketball, volleyball. There are some transformation. I learned from the uh, field experience. Or even the students need to uh, practicum as a student going to some uh, society organ organization uh, with someone's instruction, then he go to practicum. And when he or she uh, mature, and then going to other organization to be an in independent internship, but with some mentoring uh, to help, help them. And as a competence mix for sport management, I also uh, divided uh, into three parts to make a whole sport manager. The top is leadership. Second part is functional competence, and then the basic competence. The leadership, the sport manager, should have strong motivation to keep himself or herself in a well condition and uh, work with other persons together to achieve the goal's mission or the organization's goals. This is what I call leadership. And then you might choose some functional competence, like most of you now you are uh, deciding which theme of your dissertation. Maybe you choose finance, marketing, or facility operations, or even human resource, or, hum or even the legacy of Sochi uh, from Winter Olympic Games. This is your functional competence. And then the basic competence for all of the sport manager, you need to have a competence on the inter interpersonal communications, self-management, information technology applications, and uh, problem solving competence. This is what I call the competence mix for sport management. And why there are some, uh, we talk about the globalization. At the beginning, I say the general definition of globalization cannot explain why we are here, why higher education the first one is everyone try to catch up the international trade. When international trade is moving, nobody want to be left out. They want to keep on the moving. And then they try to connect or exchange and rector left and uh, pro-rector uh, arena. They visit Taiwan and we, we share, we, we exchange. And then we have a concrete cooperation uh, agreement to do, do something for the future. And most important, some nations or organizations, they try to have a successful exposure 
on the global stage. They, want, they don't want to be missing when there's an international uh, stage. Why you are missing? The people cannot see you. And then, finally, we want to promote and create impact from the international sport event by participation. So when we see Kazan, the Kazan city host year 2013, the university games. I was there eight days. This is at the beginning of the opening ceremony. So in a sudden, the second day or in the midnight, the website of the International Sport News, when you see the Sport News, Kazan is on the top of the news list. And then Sochi, year 2014, the opening also make the Sochi well known around the world. And on the international stage for the sport event, there will be an awarding ceremony for the winner, and the media will focus on the winners every minute. So you have a chance to show, to expose your character. But not only the winners, but also the ser service ladies in the awarding. This is in Kazan awarding ceremony. And also the flag racing in the sport event, also the focus of the sport event. And this is last July in Guangzhou, Korea, the year uh, 2015, the university games flag racing ceremony. For the winners, for the uh, uh, awarders, you can see many, many uh, information or, and got some image. And then I moved to the globalization of higher education. If you look at the website of UNESCO, there are many statistics uh, in the UNESCO uh, the project or plan. They have a document talk about the education year 2030. And I summarize, I found there are some, the first one is there is a regional promotion in the world. And then the state or institute, they have a cooperation agreement to make globalization. And the third one is a personal traveling, traveling like us, become our second home, uh, like Sochi citizen, personal training. But the other way of globalization is just like now, during our open speech, there are somebody else on the website, they also participate in our uh, open lecture. That is uh, open courseware, or then the advanced technology we call MOOCs, M-O-O-C. We see, this is a UNESCO uh, statistic. You can choose any country where do students come from to, to UK? Or where do UK students go into? <laughs> going, coming in and then going out. You can choose what you are interested in the nations and you can look at. And uh, from the statistic, UK could be the most uh, uh, in intensive international student uh, for higher education so far. But how about other regions? There is a European Union, uh, they called uh, Erasmus uh, program. They provide scholarship for students to travel, uh, study, train, gain work experience, and volunteer abroad to other countries. Like NTSU, we work with uh, uh, Germ uh, the uh, Hungary uh, Sport University. We jointly to apply for the Erasmus scholarship. Then the students or faculties 
of Hungary Sport University. They can have the scholarship uh, visiting to Taiwan to teaching or to learning or sharing we together. And we work with the uh, Munich Business School. Also, we have similar uh, program got from the support from uh, European Union. So the new version, the Erasmus Plus, they will provide 4 million Europeans to study, to train, to gain work experience and volunteers abroad in uh, the year 2014 to 2020. That's the uh, European Union. How about Asia? Asia is a very diverse region. There are about uh, 46 states. And in Southeast Asia country, there are 10 countries. But most of them are developing country. They also have an economic community. And uh, from year, from year 2000, 2010, they have a corporate cooperation. They called student mobility of higher education. They want to help the student in Southeast Asian country. They can move going out their home or country, going to the other country to study. So in by year, they set a goal, very concrete goal. By year 2011, there will be 260 students in five fields, three countries, they have 260. And to year 2013, there are 500. And then this year, year 2015, there are 500 students in 10 fields in 10 countries. They can move around. How about China and Taiwan? In this year, year 2015, every week, there are 828 direct fly, direct fly between Taiwan city and China city, 64 cities. Every week, more than 800 direct fly from Taipei to Beijing, three hours, to Shanghai, two and, 30, two and a half hours to Hong Kong, one and, uh, one and a half hours. So it became a one day living area between Taiwan and uh, uh, China, some city, very convenient. And according to the year 2012, the governments in Taiwan and China, they signed a, an agreement about education cooperation agreement. ECA. From that year, now there are more than 10,000 students traveling across to study every year, a year. It is almost uh, 20 times. And now let's talk about uh, the MOOCs. Uh, now here, it could be 80% only. But, but on the website, it could be more than 100,000 or 10,000. It depends on that for this online YouTube, you don't have to register, you can watch. But you, if you want to uh, raise questions to have a uh, interaction with the uh, lecture, then you have to register. And online and a course, so this is uh, four words together, they call MOOCs. And in the background of the MOOCs and the future, you can see this figure. Originally, that's here. Everybody, if you want to, uh, if you are interested in the courses provided by MIT, you can online and look at it, free charge. And also some countries uh, offer the open university. On the television, you can watch the video, but no interaction. But later, the Stanford University, America, they provide an interaction technology, bring in 
the open courseware. Like now, after speech, some students outside, they can via the internet, we can interact uh, closely at the same time. Or later, they can go, go in to the courseware and have a look, and then you can have a test. This is they call online distance learning, the, the, the trend of this course. Last month in the Asian Association Conference in Malaysia, Langkawi, we talked with the faculties from America. Now in United States, 60% of the sport management major courses will be delivered the online distance learning uh, courses, 60% of them. They say, if you did not offer this kind of course in an America education environment, then you'll be kept out. That's America situation. And finally, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the approach of globalization in sport management. If sport management globalization is necessary and important, then what approach would be effective for us to realize globalization? Firstly, I would like to say the trunk. I think uh, for one week, how to uh, symbolize the earth uh, means the globalization. And uh, we buy trunk by a huge tree already there, then you can reach the globalization very effectively and very shortly. That is uh, the sport management programs in a university, which is designed to cope with the needs of promoting specific international organizations or events, such as IOC, International Olympic Committee, or the Olympic Games, or some international games you can design for that. So when you see the system of IOC, like a universal system, as a core, there's an executive board, and there's a president, they have an administration office, and they have their members around the world. The member is even more than your member. And then they have a Olympic solid solidarity, they have a museum at Lausanne, they have a commission working group. I heard that the 2020 Olympic meeting, some of the meeting were held in, uh, at uh, Sochi, and then they proposed uh, 20 recommendations and the 20 actions, they call 2020. And uh, uh, there are many uh, international sport federations, Olympic recognized as sport. And the media, the top partner program, or the local sponsor, supplier, or national Olympic committee. It is a IOC system, like a big tree or a woods already there. And now we are at the Sochi, Russian International Olympic University. Let's see the mission of Rio to create a next generation university. The very best in the sphere of sport and Olympic education. So Rio connect its education with the Olympic education tightly and to prepare leaders for Russian and worldwide sport industry. To build modern research facilities for Olympic movement and the Russian sport. To keep and develop the Olympic legacy of the Sochi 2014 Olympic Games. This is the mission of Rio. By trunk, very shortly, since year 2009 so far. Five years, Rio has been reaching very far. The third year uh, uh, students are here. And you, uh, you, when you return your hometown, 
you will have a, you will impact uh, for your country or for the uh, Olympic related related uh, uh, movement. The other example is in uh, Japan. Japan, uh, there's one national institute of fitness and sport at uh, Kagoshima, the south of Japan. Since this year, March, year 2015, they began to offer a program called International Sport Academy. Why they do this? They are doing this for 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. I was one of the lecturers in the uh, uh, Kanoya Sport University International Sport Academy. You see the structure of their development. They include the overseas cooperation organizations from Germany, from France, Spain, Canada, IOC, National Federation, NOC, a lot. And uh, Japan domest domestic cooperative organizations. And then they invite some participants from international, from Korea, from China, Shanghai, from Taiwan, from Thailand, from Indonesia, or from the National Olympic Committee staff. They go together to Kanoya, Kagoshima, to study for a three-week international sport academy for year 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. And then I talk about by route. By route, like a picture, we uh, plant a seed, and then you uh, pour the water on the ground, and then the seed might become grow from a flower, and then to be a small tree, to a medium tree, to a big tree, and some big tree to form a woods or in, in a forest to reach the globalization. The university sport management Depart department, they try to develop their curriculum or teaching, research, or association related to international issue to help to promote their students or faculties to make them they will be confident, capable, and competitive in the global context or cooperation. Nobody wants to be a loser. Everyone wants to be competent in the international context. So this is the startup MAPE of International Sport Association. From North America, NASM, we call NASM, North America Society on Sport Management in year 1985. Why in 1985? One year after 1984, Los Angeles Olympic Games, they found sport management very, very important and very helpful. The first one, Olympic Games, they have benefit from organizing the Olympic Games. No debt, also surplus, two 0.5 uh, billion uh, US dollar. And then the win going to the European in 1993. European established the European Association on Sport Management. And uh, the year 1992, Barcelona Olympic Games also seems to be a very important case to help Barcelona city to be a very attractive, uh, old, uh, from old city to become an attractive uh, uh, tourism city from Olympic Games. And then this win blew to Asia. In year 2002, the Asian Association for Sport Management started up. Why on this year, I was there in year 2001, that's in Beijing, the sport university, university sport games 
held there, and uh, about uh, 10 professors we meet in Beijing. And uh, we talk, we, we, when we look at the Northern America development and uh, European development, we talk about the development of sport management organization in Asia. So we form the Asian Association for Sport Management in Singapore, and we began to develop so far. And then this month, the Australia and New Zealand, in year 1996, they worked together to organize. That year, the Sydney Olympic Games has been decided in year 2000. So they, they began working, develop the sport management program. So in Australia, they have a called the Forum of Sport Knowledge. That is uh, the knowledge to organize a successful mega sport event at Sydney. And in year, uh, why Algeda, that's in South America, at Brazil, also they organize a similar organization for sport management. Why? Because at the year of year 2009, Rio, the capital city of Brazil, got a bit of Olympic Games, year 2016. So they feel in sport management very important. So they organize the similar uh, organizations and uh, uh, interact with uh, NASM, ESM, and ASM. Every year we invite the faculties to have a meeting and a conference. And uh, Africa also, they say in the world, every continent have your own international sport management organization. We should have one. We don't want to be left. So in Kenya University, at Kenya, they start up the a ASMA, Africa Sport Management Association in year 2010. And then in year 2010 at Taiwan, we host a preparation meeting for the five, six international organi organizations of sport management to form a organization we called WASM, World Associa Association for Sport Management, WASM. And it was started formally in year 2012. And now the, uh, the president is from uh, Australia, John Paulson. This is a startup of International Sport Asso Association. By route, they spend a lot of time to build the international organizations for sport management. Yeah. And these international associations of sport management, periodically, they organize EC meeting, assembly, conference, seminar, and publish news or journal. And many corporations among universities or faculties are promoted during the meet, this meeting. For NTSU at Taiwan, we are small scale, but we have more than 20 internationals around the world to have a concrete cooperation project because of this international association. We meet periodically and we re reach the consensus to work together to help our students or faculties to be better. And this is a conference in, uh, at uh, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Uh, many uh, participants flying to Ulaanbaatar in July. And uh, this picture is uh, the WASM, uh, when they have a, a global summit delegate coming to Taiwan. During the meeting, we reach a connected cooperation agreement at NTSU. The Asian Association Conference held at Langkawi, Malaysia in August, end of August. And this is the second time the Asian Conference we invite 
the wasm, wasm uh, staff and the leaders going together to go with the ASM conference. And uh, during the meeting, during the conference, we also uh, advance some more cooperation in the future. But it is a uh, no matter it is uh, by root or by trunk for globalization, there are some effort required to maintain, to help these international associations be functional and sustainable. I summarize six efforts we have to put up. We have to streamline, streamline the work relationship between associations and members. And we have to establish a healthy and a nurturing, mutually beneficial structure. And we have to establish a healthy, viable, and user-friendly income sources to avoid bankrupt of the association. And we have to build an identity for the alliance, for the organizations, by establishing a headquarter, an, an office, or by a journal or newsletter issuing periodically. And finally, we have to build a functional leadership team, but based on friendship and professional. This is what I summarize, either by root or by uh, trunk to be globalization. Uh, before to end by lecturing, I would like to uh, take two minutes to talk about NTSU, uh, National Taiwan Sport University. Uh, the mission of National Taiwan Sport U University, we are cultivating our students with the elite characters. The elite in English means some capable student who are in search of excellence with love on the international environment. They are willing to challenge the top and uh, to be a effective leadership. So we cultivate students with elite characters. They are willing and qualified to create and share values around the world. And this is my lecturing uh, today, and I'm very happy to be here and honored, and I'm uh, open the time for your uh, feedback and uh, questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Gao. Any questions, please? You are welcome. Let's start. Please. The first one. Thank you, dear professor. Uh, I am uh, interested in sports medicine, and uh, maybe you add some words about the uh, developing of the approach, systemic approach. You maybe have the department of uh, recovering or any general sport uh, performance support. So uh, you talk about the approach yes. to yes. globalization. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I, if uh, in this case I have the opportunity to g ask you, I want to understand uh, how big and uh, what is the structure of the sports medicine uh, development uh, in your university. In my university, okay. Uh, our university developed the sport management majors uh, in uh, 1997 uh, from bachelor degrees and now going to master and mas uh, doctoral program. Uh, so far we have almost uh, 20 years. And uh, the way we do that is uh, we work with a business school and uh, uh, work with a, a sort of a American uh, MBA education system mostly. Yeah, but recently in the past five years, uh, we found that 
uh, when global trend, students should be able to move around the world. Uh, we should help the student to have more contact at different nations, different societies, uh, either developing country or developed country. Uh, all of this environment, students have to participate. Because like Darwin says, the creature survive longer is not the strongest, but the most adapted to the environment. <laughs> That's our philosophy. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Uh, OK, uh, oh, one more question. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Tatiana, and my question is about uh, what do you think about the role of the professors, lecturers, and people, um, and fact that we have really massive open online distance learning. <laughs> yeah. You mean the roles of uh, faculty, students uh, in the uh, teaching or education? Uh, yeah. I mean uh, the role of the human being. <laughs> this being. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, might believe that everyone is always learning. Even the faculties need uh, learning. Uh, learning from, from where? Learning from maybe the development of the society or even faculties uh, teaching students and even learning from students' feedback. They learn uh, each other, especially uh, uh, in the, the knowledge development now the uh, internet uh, information is very sufficient and always keep uh, 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 update. So for faculty, it is very hard to keep the latest uh, uh, information. So faculty's role could be changing, changing to be helping students to develop the students go or reasoning or work with the student to, uh, to be competent, to work together, not only one way. And uh, at, for our experience uh, at Taiwan, uh, for students, for, for the internship, the internship very important and uh, for students very helpful. But the faculties should have sufficient communication with the organizations. They want to uh, provide the internship opportunity for students. Some, I mean, the students can uh, have to be treated like uh, formal staff. They have to, to be trained before uh, to play the role. And uh, the faculties have to uh, also mentoring the student during their internship. Once, the, if the students have some uh, questions or problems or confused during the uh, internship, it is not only the responsibility of the organization, but also the faculty or mentor will help the student to learn from the internship. Yes. Thank you, dear professor, professor, for your lecture. I want to ask you about uh, what do you think about uh, association uh, of universities devoted to sport management? Uh, we have a lot of universities. You oh, said. many associations. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you, you think the word needs in this association? Uh, of universities devoted to sport management. Okay. Uh, you mean the... Uh, the question is whether you need, we need them or not. Oh, we need or not. Okay. Uh, we need or not, for me, it depends if the organization can be helpful for a university. Then we need it. <laughs> if the organization just take the money from the university, they cannot provide valuable for the university, then we don't need it. <laughs> um, 
you talked about a massive online open course. Oh, stand up, yeah. Yes. Sorry, if I sp sorry if I speak too fast. Um, you talk about massive online open courses, uh, and I've seen some before. I've been on the Coursera website. Um, they're really interesting initiatives, but I think the, one of the main problems is that if the student who starts it doesn't have enough internal motivation, that they won't finish the course. Do you think that universities could, you know, create external motivations so that they could kind of diversify themselves? And yeah, basically, so that the student will actually finish the course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, f from our experience, uh, thirty percent of our students are athlete on the international, so they cannot in the classroom regularly, but they still need to learn. They need to keep on learning with the uh, uh, course structure. Uh, but the challenging is the learning environment and also the uh, competence-based uh, assessment. How well you have learned or if you are quali qualified to offer you the score, you pass or not. So it's also very challenging for us. Uh, last month, when I know uh, this open lecture, we are open to the internet uh, environment. I, I am uh, uh, not only excited, but also nervous, <laughs> because uh, many unknown uh, participants may uh, watching or listening to my lecture. So that's one of my uh, driving force to be well prepared for this uh, open lecture. Yeah, but. Uh, I, yesterday I talked with uh, Pro Rector Arena at NTSU. We will build a similar function like this one. Then we can have uh, uh, interaction uh, from the real students, faculties, and NTSU uh, next uh, spring, uh, about March. March time, we can have uh, more interaction uh, we don't need a 20, 20 hours flight. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, please? One more. Um, good morning, and thank you so much, Prof, for the uh, lecture. I want to um, ask um, a clarification here, because uh, if you have uh, um, universities um, advancing uh, the value of sports, and as well you have um, national university sports also advancing the value of sports. Um, don't you think um, there will be a conflict uh, of interest or um, conflict of roles? Because the national university sports will be um, organizing seminars and conference and try to uh, work on publications. And also the um, separate universities also are also um, organizing researches, seminars, and conference to advance the same value. So where do we draw the um, thin line between the universities advancing sports and the national university as well advancing sports? Yes, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Ten years ago for the Asian Association for Sport Management, uh, we also have this kind of uh, 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 issue. So uh, in the past uh, 10 years, now we find a way to cooperate with the uh, university and uh, the international association. Uh, I think every university, uh, they, they try to have uh, their own international uh, seminar or the conference, then you can uh, work with the international organizations. Similar to uh, IOC. IOC have uh, Olympic Games, then the city will be in. Now, according to 2020 concept, they were inviting, uh, IOC invite cities to host the games. Yeah, so this way could be uh, beneficial. Uh, we help each other, e university and uh, associations, we help each other to save uh, 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 inefficient effort. Thank you, any other questions, please? Well, uh, all the questions, uh, from my point of view, all the questions were very positive. 
May I ask you one negative? Okay. <laughs> and one bad question. Uh, and be ready, students. I will ask all of you bad questions during your uh, dissertation uh, defense. So, um, uh, as far as I understood from your presentation, the globalization is a real, the gl globalization in sport management is a real good thing. Uh, are there any uh, negative trends in the globalization of sport management? <laughs> Too good to be true. <laughs> 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 this is a negative part. <laughs> but uh, I noticed a, uh, a statistic uh, two years ago when I visited uh, uh, the Hungary. And uh, in European Union, there are globalization. And also they open the employee opportunities for non-European citizens going. And this, the, the statistic is when European Union opened its employment opportunity for outside European citizens, they lost 10,000 million working jobs for European residents. So that's the reason they promote the Erasmus program. They don't want to close the door, but they help their citizens, students, to study abroad, to strengthen their international mobility. That's what I got two years ago. You, you might lose your uh, advantage yeah, from the globalization. Any other questions, please? Oh, please, one more. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for lecture. Uh, what do you think? Uh, if sp sport manager, not a sportsman, is it good or bad? You mean uh, if the sport no management, only on just sport? Uh, no. If sport manage manager, manager, yeah. not a sportman. Ah, I see. I see. Not an athlete. Is, is a good or? <laughs> I think for me, it also depends. <laughs> I think uh, for me, I'm a sport administrator as a rector or president of a sport university, but I'm not an athlete. I'm an amateur. I'm not a professional uh, sportman, but I keep uh, exercise uh, regularly and I participate in uh, sport. I, uh, but my role is through administration or management to help the sport develop its power and impact for their own or on the society. So I, I see some successful uh, case that are athlete, the, the professional athlete to be a sport manager. But also I see some bad cases for the uh, uh, professional athlete to be a manager, boss, boss. And uh, this year, last uh, January, uh, in Taiwan, we established our national uh, sport training center to be a formal organization. And uh, they are looking for a CEO, a CEO of this training center. So they, they call for the, uh, a proper person. And uh, I'm one of the uh, person to be asked, Kao, President Kao, you recommend one person to be the CEO. And uh, for me, just like your question, uh, what backgrounds uh, or what competence mix should this CEO have? And uh, finally, I propose a person who is uh, archery Olympian in 1988 in uh, Seoul Olympic Games. Uh, he should to be the final, rank seven. And uh, later, he go to the master program, SIM on sport management, and uh, study at uh, America Northern Colorado University. And uh, then coming back, uh, he to be a coach on the archery team. 
And uh, seven years ago, uh, he was appointed to be a dean of general affairs of the university to do construction, <laughs> electricity, water supply, many services. He do that for three years. And then uh, four years ago, I appoint him to be dean of the elite athlete uh, college to lead the coaches and the athlete players uh, for one and a half years. So last December, I recommend him to be the CEO. And there are 10 persons recommended. He was picked up <laughs> to be the CEO. So far, he played very wonderful. <laughs> okay. So, uh, j just to make, uh, to say some words in conclusion of uh, this uh, uh, brilliant lecture. Well, uh, uh, from my point of view, my question was very bad, but uh, if we look at the globalization, uh, we can say that uh, this is very contradictional uh, process. I mean that it's really full of contradictions and uh, in the world of science, I mean that in the um, history and politology science, there are two groups of scientists with the two different views on the globalization in general. Because one of them, and the bigger one, say that more positive trends in the globalization. The smaller ones say no, the globalization is a very bad process started uh, in the last century, um, started with the internet, because uh, the real meaning of the globalization is the promotion of the Western values to the countries and to the uh, people and to the communities uh, that suffered from them. They have their own way of living, they have their own uh, views, they have their culture and their suffering of this aggression and uh, they cannot defend themselves and so on and so forth. Those who are pro, I mean, who say that the globalization bring, uh, brings a lot of positive trends, and I belong to this part, say no, because first of all, globalization opened uh, the world, uh, opened uh, the world to all the, uh, all the citizens of the world, I should say, uh, without uh, any difference where they say, what kind of color they have, or, um, of their faces, or what language they speak, and so on. So, uh, this is the open information space. This is the possibility, the access to the international job market. This is the access to the international innovative technologies, and so on and so forth. And uh, when we are speaking about our uh, specific work, uh, we can say that this is the access to the education, international education, and in sport management uh, as a part of it. What does it mean for us? It means that sport management uh, as a part of science and a part of education appeared not long ago, as you know, only, I should say, 30, 40 years ago, and started in the United States and Great Britain, first of all, the first institutions and uh, programs may appear there. Now we have them more than 500 all around the world. And what is important for us? Uh, sport management has uh, more or less uh, the same meaning all over the world and the same uh, approaches. If you study in, uh, in Sochi, if you study in Ohio, if you study uh, in Brunel University in Great Britain or somewhere else, you will have more or less the same unique uh, approach to the problems that cover the sport management. So what does it mean? Uh, the principles of sport management that you will learn and I hope will learn to apply in your life, you will use everywhere. You become the uh, citizen of the world. You may come back after being graduated from the university to your countries. After that, you may move to Lausanne, Geneva or somewhere else and you will speak with your colleagues on the same language. It will never take you the uh, necessity to open the vocabulary or something like that to explain yourself what you would, you would you like to do, what would you like to promote, and so on and so forth. And from that point of view, the globalization of sport education, of uh, education of sport management, is absolutely unique 
because the sport is, you know, the sport is a piece, <laughs> as we say, and that's why you will be absolutely ready uh, to apply your knowledge, and uh, the globalization will give you this uh, good possibility. So, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your lecture. Thank you very much. So as you are our friend and our guest, we will give you naturally. This is uh, the payment for the lecture. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the, uh, you know what does it mean. Master your future. It will be oh, good up for you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I will ask you to uh, sign the, our book of honor to make some words, to write some words in our book. You are our uh, honor uh, lecturer. Uh, qualified to yes, design. you are qualified to oh, do okay. it. <laughs> like Thank you, everybody. <laughs> 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 Good. Good. Good.